Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to use the GIMP clone tool, also known as a stamp tool, to remove an object from an image. So let's open up GIMP and on my desktop I've got this folder. <coughs> I've got this image of this plane and we want to remove this plane and it just have sky in the background. So we're going to remove the plane, that's the objective. So I'll put a link to this particular image so you can follow the tutorial. I'll put that in the YouTube description and we'll just drag and drop the plane into GIMP software and the first thing we should always do is make a copy of this, this image so we just right click here and duplicate so we've got two copies and we can hide the bottom one let's just hide it here now we want to get rid of this sky so what we will do I'm just going to drag this across to give us a bit more canvas space and we want to zoom in a bit here Let's just you click on the move tool for now and we'll middle mouse click and we just want to get to zoom in a bit to say around this sort of distance. Maybe a little bit a little bit out, that'll be fine, something like this. So I'm zoomed in here, I can see the image. So when you zoom in, you use the control key and use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out like this, using the mouse wheel, holding down the control key, and then you can move the image around on the screen using the middle mouse button. So you hold down the middle mouse button and you can pan the image. You're not really moving the image, you're moving the canvas, yeah? Okay, so let's click on the stamp tool here, or the clone tool. And when we click on the clone tool, there's a few different settings. I'm just gonna go over the basic settings. So this will be the size, the aspect ratio, leave it the same, the angle, leave it the same, just leave it as defaults. Spacing, this is fine, and hardness is fine. So we leave it at five and 25, something like this. And the force, we leave it at 100. Um, smooth strokes, quality, leave it at around 20 and the weight around 50. You don't have to have the option enabled, but it's nice to have it, it just smooths out the, the strokes, right? And then um, the source will be the image. You can pick other sources and stuff like this, but leave the source as the image. And then the alignment, most importantly, normally it's set to none, but you want to set it to aligned here. Aligned, yeah, like this. So get your settings up there like that. And then uh, we can start to clone content. So the size I'm setting it to around, <clears throat> let's set it to around 190, yeah? close enough to 190. That would be the size of the brush. In fact, we'll make it a little bit smaller. Let's make it around 160, I think. Uh, it's a little bit smaller than that. Depends on what you're doing, right? So yeah, let's say around, uh, it's around 80 let's set it around 80 now what you need to do is hold down the control key on your keyboard and then what 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 this tool is actually doing <clears throat> is it's taking another part of the image and then almost using that like as a, almost like a reference for the paintbrush so it sounds a little bit tricky but if you think about it, if we wanted to get rid of this tail here we don't want to copy content from all the way over here and then draw over the tail here because it's, really, it's really like light blue color over here, right? But closer to the tail is going to be more realistic to remove the tail, so replace it with some other content. So we want to click around here. So we hold down the control key and then left mouse click. And then when we move our mouse, that becomes the reference. So when we move our mouse and we paint, it's going to start painting from this location. So we want to move closer to the tail and then just draw over the tail and something like this, right? We keep going backwards and forwards like this, and we'll draw over the tail, just the tail, like this. And sometimes it's worth going down at an angle like this, it's a little bit easier. And we'll get rid of this tail. And we need to stop around here because we need to do a bit of other work, right? So now we want to start from here and draw across this way. And the sky is going to look a little bit funny, but we're going to fix that afterwards. So we start here and we draw over this part and I'm letting go of the mouse button every so often and I'm re just moving my cursor back and then going forwards like this, just like this. And then you can start going down at an angle to get bigger chunks out of the way, like this. And don't worry about the sky, it's not going to look perfect, so we're going to fix that afterwards. Just keep referencing and moving back and drawing over the image like this. You can go down at an angle. So it's 
pretty easy, right? And we'll work out the sky afterwards, we'll fix that. So really we're trying to get as close to where the um, the object we're drawing over a reference close enough to it. So I'll just keep doing this. It's a little bit repetitive, but we'll get rid of most of this pretty quick. And then we'll sort out the sky afterwards. So use the middle mouse wheel button to move the screen across. And sometimes it's worth, so we could, we could uh, hold down the control key, click on this side here, like somewhere here, and then reference this side, because this side is different, right? You've got to be a bit careful, because you don't want to clone an existing part of the plane. So this is why it's worth going at an angle sometimes. Downwards like this, and you're, you're less likely to reference. And you can move your reference point. If it's too close, you can move it across a little bit. Okay, almost done. Right, so if we zoom out, we can see the sky looks a bit rubbish now, right? You can see the colours, it just doesn't look right. But we've got rid of the plane, that's the objective. Now we can fix the sky. So with the sky, we're going to increase the size of the brush. Uh, we'll set it to something like 200. And then we're going to click over here on the clouds. So we're going to hold down the control key and click somewhere around here. Hold down the control key, then left click. And that will be our reference. That's what we're going to use as the reference. And then we're going to draw over here. We're going to draw across the screen. And then we're going to re-reference something over here to make it look a bit more natural. Because what you don't want to do is copy all of this all the way across. It's not going to look very natural. So we're using different parts of this sky to, to, to create more content where we want to draw over. We're going to make it all blue across here, right? So we can use this part here, for example something like this then we're going to go on rows we're going to go like a banding across so we'll start over here somewhere and then we can draw over here like this then we we'll start here and then we can start drawing around here and when you get to a certain point you need to go back to the reference so when we get to around here we need to click back here and then continue drawing over here and then we go back and click and draw over here and then you've got these clouds, right? You've got clouds here, a cloud here, here, and here, and here. So it looks too repetitive. So click here, and then click over this cloud, then click here, then click over this cloud. So you're just removing some of the repetition. You don't want too much repetition in there, right? Oh, it looks looks a bit fake. So you want to break up the clouds a little bit. Not make it look too unrealistic. And here you can see like there's three clouds in a row and they all look a bit the same so we can just break that up a little bit and just make it look a bit more true and real you can play around with that and get it exactly how you like now we'll start up here so we'll right click uh, we'll hold down the control key and click here and then we're going to start drawing here across the screen and we we'll right click we hold down the control key and click here again and we draw this part in let's control click we'll control click here and draw this part in so it's looking a bit more natural now so we'll control click here and we'll draw across here go back control click draw here and then draw here and we'll tidy this up a little bit after we'll control click here and draw across So what you don't want to do is go too far back because you see this straight line here. So you can press Ctrl Z to undo that. Because if you go off the screen then it's trying to draw here and this is like a, a 
a break point so we want to draw to the right really and draw to the right so that isn't actually looking too bad now right it's pretty decent but i would say the only thing that looks a bit iffy is these these this cloud here this one here and this one here they look exactly the same so we can control click like around here and then click over this one just to break it up <clears throat> hold down the control left click around here and let's try and control click a little bit just to break it up a little bit got mine not to get this gray down at the bottom so let's reduce the size of our brush let's control click like around here and then we can just go over this a little bit and just try and break it up and make it look not so you know repetitive we want to break up the sky so overall that's not a pretty bad job we did okay we've got rid of the sky well we got rid of the plane and we replaced it with this sky we can then play around with it and you know you can work on this a bit more and be the smaller the brush the more finer detail you can get in there right i did this quite quick using a bigger brush but if you use a smaller brush then you can be very detailed you can get right in there and change up the clouds and you can even use a completely different picture you could reference a different image and use the clouds from a completely different picture but really you want to stick with the same image it's going to work out a lot a lot better so that's how we use the gimp clone tool to remove an object from an image and then replace it with some other content to make it look natural and real again right okay so we should go to file save as and let's go and save this as a clone tool zero one we'll save that and then we'll go to file export as and we'll export it as a jpeg file same name .jpg export 92 is fine let's export this image we can close down GIMP now and now we've got two different images here we've got the original plane on this side and then we've got the one with the sky removed well the plane removed with this with the new sky it's not a bad job we did that pretty quick we could have spent more time uh, put more energy and time into this uh, and got a better job done but it looks pretty natural right <clears throat> it's not a bad job so that's how you use the clone tool in GIMP I'll be doing some more tutorials using that clone tool we can use it for different purposes as well it's not about removing objects sometimes it's about creating more so we could have used the clone tool to create more buildings you could have done exactly the same thing you could have zoomed right in here <clears throat> and added more buildings for example yeah so it's not always about removing objects you can use that same tool to actually add objects we could have added buildings here okay hope you enjoyed that tutorial and i hope you find it useful and i look forward to seeing you on the next dcp web tutorial